Hello everyone. I hope you have enjoyed the Thanksgiving holidays. Today I would like to show you my solution for the Ken's wife's problem, which I have promised a while ago. So let me start revisiting the problem first. The problem is the following. We are given a thousand bottles of wine and one of them get poisoned. Our goal is to find out which bottle get poisoned. What we can do is to mix these wines into some drinks and ask the servant to test them. By observing which servant uh, get poisoned, we want to identify the poisoned bottle. A more difficult question is how about two bottles get poisoned? So let me start with the simple case where only one bottle get poisoned. I'm sure you all get the answer, but let me just show you my solution so that we are at the same stage of notations and then we can move on to the more difficult one. So my claim is the following. Uh, with N bottles, we can identify the poisoned uh, bottle with log 2N drinks. For example, when N equals to 1000, we can do it in 10 drinks. So how to do that? We start by labeling the wines with uh, binary numbers. For example, if we have uh, eight bottles, we can use three digit binary numbers to represent them. So here, each row corresponds to one bottle of wine. So next, we are going to prepare the drinks according to the columns. So the first drink contains the bottle 4, 5, 6, 7, which are the wines that have uh, digit 1 in the first column. The second drink contains the mixture of bottle 2, 3, 6, and 7, which are the ones that have digit 1 in the second column. And the third drink contains the mixture of 1, 3, 5, 7, which are the ones that have digit 1 in the third column. So now we get our free drinks and we are going to show that using these uh, free drinks we are able to figure out the poisoned wine. So the strategy is the following. We want to identify the poisoned wine using a binary representation. So assume servant A is poisoned, then we put a 1 in the first digit, otherwise we put a 0. And we do the same thing for servant B and servant C. Let's assume that we get a 101 in terms of representation, which means servant A is poisoned, servant B is not poisoned, and servant C is poisoned. So my claim is that the poisoned bottle must be the bottle number 5. So why this is true? By construction, the drink A contains all the bottles which uh, has uh, digit 1 in the first column. So in other words, if x1 is 1, then A must contain x, uh, which is equivalent to say that servant A will be poisoned. And if x1 is 0, then A does not contain the poisoned wine, and then the servant A will not get poisoned. So each drink identifies one digit of x, and using all of them, we can recover the full binary representation. This is great because this tells us we can recover x using log n drinks. In terms of information theory, I'm pretty sure this is the minimum number we can do. Because even we allow the sequential observation, which means we give the servant A a drink and then observe either it is poisoned or not and then prepare the next drink. Even in this stronger case, the best we can do is to bisection the bottles and then do it uh, in log time. So in our case, we give uh, the servants uh, the wines all at the same time. So there is no hope we can do better. So in this simple case, we get the optimal uh, answer. But the question becomes uh, surprisingly difficult when we allow two wines get poisoned. 
So let's see what happened in this case. Assume that we use the same strategy as uh, previously, and uh, we get uh, the same uh, representation from 0, 1. But now we have two po poison ones, x and y. So we cannot say that x must be 5 or y must be 5, because in this case, we can have x equals to 1, 0, 0, and y equals to 0, 0, 1. This will give the same observation. So are we done? Not really, because uh, we still get some information if uh, A get poisoned. This means that at least one of the digits of x1 and y1 must be 1. So what we get is not directly the uh, full representation of x1 and y1, what we get is the maximum between x and y in each column. A natural question is to ask, can we derive the minimum between x and y as well? Indeed, this can be done by a simple calculus. We can write the minimum between x and y as 1 minus the maximum between the complement of x and y. So I refer to the complement of a number as 1 minus the number. For example, if we have x equals to 1, 0, 0, then 1 minus x will be 0, 1, 1. If y equals to 0, 0, 1, then 1 minus y is 1, 1, 0. So remind that x and y represent the number of the poisoned wines. And what we are going to prepare is free drinks, D, E, and F, using the complement of the binary representation. So more precisely, the drink D contains uh, bottle 0, 1, 2, 3. The drink E contains bot, uh, bottle 0, 1, 4, 5, and so on. And what we observe from uh, the drink D, uh, what we observe from the servant D, E, F, is the maximum between 1 minus X and 1 minus Y. So this allows us to derive the mean and the max with uh, six jinks. A natural question is to ask, is this enough to derive E and Y? Unfortunately, this is not the case, because uh, we can get the same uh, representation with different pairs of X and Y. For example, in this case, if x equals to 0, 0, 0, and y equals to 1, 0, 1, then we get the same mean and max as the case x equals to 1, 0, 0, and y equals to 0, 0, 1. So in some sense, we need to control the permutations between the coordinate as well, and this is not enough by doing just mean and max. Then what's next? Let's summarize what we have already. We, by using six strings, we are able to construct the max and mean between the binary representation. So we can sum them up to get x plus y, where the addition is defined in the group z over 2z. If you are not familiar with the abstract uh, algebra, this is just saying 1 plus 1 equals to 0. So conceptually, if we have x plus y, and if in the addition we have x times y, then we can solve a quadratic equation to find out x and y. But we need to be a bit careful about what we mean by x times y, because x and y are both three-dimensional vectors here, and we need to define the multiplication such that x times y is again a three-dimensional vector. So this is not the case if we use the uh, standard the inner product, which just gives a number. What we really want is to identify x and y by using x plus y and x times y. So here comes an extremely beautiful mathematical theory, which is uh, first developed by a French mathematician, Galois. 
According to Galois theory, there exists a finite field of two to the k elements for any k. This field is usually denoted as GF, which refers to Galois field. If you never heard about field, this is somehow saying that we can perform standard algebraic operation on these two to the k elements. For example, we can do addition and multiplication or division with respect to a non-zero element. The existence of such structure on this finitely many elements is highly non-trivial. We are glad that Galois has de developed the theory for us. And here we are going to use GF8 because we have only eight elements. So let's see how we can use Galois theory to find out the poison wines. In this table, we prepare three more drinks using the cube of each element. Here, the cube is defined in the finite field. You may notice that it is very different from the standard multiplication in real numbers. For example, 2 to the power 3 is different from 8. In the Galois field, the multiplication is somehow strange, but let's just admit that we can do the multiplication, then we can get the representation of uh, maximum between x cubed and y cubed. Using three more things, we can represent the minimum between x cubed and y cubed. Then we can sum that up to get the sum between x cubed and y cubed. Finally, we get x times y using the following identity, which is x plus y cube minus x cube plus y cube equals x plus y times x y. Notice that on the y hand side in the uh, real numbers, we, there is a three missing on the right hand side. But since we are in a Galois field of uh, base 2, so 3 equals to 1. Uh, that's how I simplify this equation, which is not uh, incorrect. So with uh, x plus y and x times y, we can recover x and y by solving a quadratic equation. And this is how we can find x and y in 4 times not to n test. So when n equals to 8, this is meaningless because we can just uh, use one drink for each wine and then find out the poison wines in a test. But when get n gets larger and larger, this becomes much more efficient. For example, when n equals to a thousand, we only need 40 drinks to figure out which two bottles get poisoned. I found this quite amazing because there is this very deep and profound theory behind such simple question. For this time, I don't have time to prepare slides talking about multiplications in Galois field, so I will leave it for another video. Uh, by the way, the number 40 in the solution may not be optimal, but this algorithm is quite simple and I'm sure that it gives the correct dependency in n, which is the knock dependency. So I hope you enjoy the video and also the beautiful math behind it. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.